Hello, everyone. This is a first of the one, two. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, this is a very special moment we are sharing with you, Alex Collier and myself. We are both contactees since a young age and the information we have been given by our extraterrestrial contact are crossing and exactly, exactly saying the same messages. So we are getting together tonight to put together our experience and share our memories and whatever this conversation leads to. So, um, Alex Collier, good evening, how are you? Hi, Elena, thank you for having me. I know this has been in the works for a little while. I'm glad we we're finally doing it here on Mother's Day. Yes. And, um, you know, it, 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 hopefully it will, it, it will give some people perspective because, you know, in the media, even though they're, they're beginning to disclose the militaries, there is behind it this, this fear mechanism that is, that is kicking in. And, and once again, you know, it's just, it's just, are there, dangers are there threats well yeah there's some you know but at the same time if there's dark there has to be the light and everybody has to remember that and that you know the universe abhors a vacuum therefore where there's dark there's going to be light and it's all about balance and we are not going to be hung out to dry and I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, we decided to do this so that, you know, we could share notes and uh, things that we've witnessed from our star families. Literally, that's what they are. Yeah. And, you know, most people on this planet have star family. They come from star family. Um, they, their souls were not born and hatched on this planet. They've come from another time and another place. And I understand that some people just won't get that yet because it, it's not time for them to, to have that piece fall into place for them. But there's a lot of others who have already done the work who know this, that they've, they've come from another time, another place, uh, or they're drawn to a specific place in the night sky because yes. they know. And... Uh, you know, that's kind of, I, I think what this is, this is about, it's, it's important because it's, you know, for me, this is meant to be empowering. Um, you know, I, I, I've made a lot of mistakes in this process, but you know, there was no manual to this. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a, after, after some of my, my big blunders and I made it into the Andromedan Hall of Shame. You know, the, there was there was no point looking back and worrying about anything after that. You know, <laughs> you know. I mean, I threw up on one of their ships. You know, I was wearing my 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 environmental energy body, and I tooted, and it was yeah. bouncing around, and there was no way to hide it. You know, um, you know, it's all uphill from there. <laughs> I know it's it's the little <laughs> details, the little the, the little stories, you know. Uh, exactly. Well, you know, I've 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 been. I don't like to call to say the name abducted, 
invited, it's the best, better word, physically in my 3D body, but as well with my light body that was um, redensified. And that, that's what how we are doing now because it's safer, redensifying my, my light body into a physical body. And I mean the little details, uh, you know, things that you, you, you don't have to, to, to think about. But as a woman, for instance, when I <laughs> redensify, I have no more makeup. Sometimes I used to wear synthetic nails, you know, no more, the raw and, you know, and that's amazing. <laughs> it's, oh my God, that, okay. Even if I had put color on my hair, the hair was wear natural color, you know, it, it little details that, that, you know, when you tell people, they go, oh, of course, of course, you know. <laughs> and all the, the well, we, we're going to share some little anecdotes, but uh, well, did you, did you always know since as far as you can remember in this incarnation that you were not from here or that you were destined to something special? such as contacts, or it came at a certain point suddenly? Uh, no, I, I don't think I knew. Um, uh, I, knew after, I knew after the first contact, that's Merlin. Um, I knew after the first contact in, in Michigan. And, you know, after, after I, I, hey, 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 give it a rest. Oh. Uh, no, I, I don't think I always knew. I'm certainly not as a kid. There was, you know, a lot of things going on. And, but, you know, um, after when I first met Viseas and Morinay again for the first time in this lifetime, uh, I, I was, I, I knew after that because, you know, when the monitors came out of the wall, like magically, and I, I began seeing scenes of like movies, but you know, they, they weren't movies, they were historical documents for lack of a better word. And, and as I was looking at each one, I was having an emotional response. And I'm not like talking like, you know, like a, watching a film or a horror movie. It wasn't anything like that. It was something really deep from within me. And it, and it almost came down like this to, into the top of my head, down to my feet, and then came out the heart. Mm. And I knew, I was just like, oh my God. And I remember being so excited to tell my mother. I'm like, mom, bad idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> bad idea. Um, but you know, after that, I spent a lot of time when I wasn't with them, dreaming about being with them, <laughs> wanting to be with them. I'm like, okay, I, you know. And of course, you know, when you're young, you think you know everything. Yeah, but it didn't even matter that I did or I didn't. It was like I wanted to be there. I didn't want to be here. Yeah. So, you know, that that whole thing was a process and um, an experience of, yes, when I was with them, there was a lot of sharing. There was a lot of knowledge. Um, most of it I didn't even understand until I was much later, uh, till I had matured. Yeah. But a lot of it was relationship building, me getting to know them, developing trust, them exactly the same way, developing trust, getting to know me. And at the same time, they already knew me, but introducing or, or getting me to remember that I wasn't just this little boy in a body, that I was this soul that existed in other places at the same time. Now, of course, that's a very difficult concept to grasp, even as a kid or even as an adult. Um, but 
they kept showing me things. They kept introducing me to things. They, and, and this was more and more an A. Um, he learned to actually use his vocal cords. And we began to dialogue out loud in English, not always telepathic. Although for quite a while, he was telepathic and at the same time was speaking. The telepathy would come first and then he would speak. And I would be so focused on the telepathy, I wouldn't hear what he said when he was speaking. And they weren't always the same thing, okay? Because um, they, think, they, they think faster than the speed of light. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what did he say? And meanwhile, he's talking to me and I'm like, what? You know, didn't get it at all. So he had to repeat himself. And, and there were a couple of times he was actually frustrated like about that. So they're not that different than our parents, you know, <laughs> because, you know, they would say things to us and, and then you'd have to put one ear, put a finger in one ear and hopefully it goes in and it bounces around and then you get it. So uh, there was that process. And, um, and then of course there was the exploring, wanting to know about the ship, the technology, where they were from, uh, about the planets, about history, about their history, um, and what it is that they do. How how do they? You know, we have all of these entertainments or distractions. They would call them distractions. You know, what is it that they do? And then you know, we got onto something where we really, we really hit on, and it wasn't just so much myself and and Morinay. Um, but his crew and then the people on their, on their mothership that the ship was attached to, and that was music. Yes. And we've had a lot of fun with that. A lot of fun. They really, they don't, they don't want to listen to any music that has lyrics. They only want instruments. And I, I was puzzled. Because, you know, the first thing I started on off with was some pop, a uh, little bit of rock and roll. The rock and roll didn't go over well at all. You know, they're just like, you know, to them, it was just noise. You know, where to us, it's, it's not. It's great. Um, but, but again, you know, we have our cultures are so different. And yet there are a lot of bridges that connect us. Yeah. Uh, but where we really connected was... Um, contemporary jazz or what they call smooth jazz oh. and I thought well that's fascinating yeah that was really really interesting and when I was little before there was going to be a contact they would play a song that I chose and uh they would I would hear it in my head and then I knew they were coming so that was my cue to wait for instructions to either walk to a specific place or to get in the car when I was old enough to drive and, and take off and, and go to a specific place. And you know, that song was solid for years. And then one day, Morinay said, you know, that's a terrible song. <laughs> it's just not a good song. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's a great song. He goes, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, okay, just because you don't like it. <laughs> but they really like jazz. And, and, and it took a while for them to formulate exactly what it was. But to them, it's all resonance. Yeah. And to hear a musician play their instruments, what they are able to read from the actual playing of the music is the energy, the passion, and the, um, the depth of the soul in the way that they construct the song. In other words, the song is an expression of their own internal emotion and passion. And that's what they were interested in. That's what they wanted to hear. Because one of the things that makes us as Terran stand out is our depth of emotion. 
And uh, you know, and that's something we take for granted here, you know, because you know we can go a hundred miles an hour in a second, and they can't do that. That they they don't have that depth, and th that's something that they're incredibly intrigued about. And they see that they feel that through music, without lyrics. <laughs> Their feeling is, hey, if they're singing, it's a distraction. That's not what we want to hear. You know, we want to hear the soul, you know, playing the music, uh, the, the, the intensity, the, the commitment to the sound. Uh, because the music is the song. It's not the lyric. It's the music, in their opinion. Yes. So... That was interesting. And a lot of things, which I will shut up here in a minute, a lot of things have come out of that as far as interaction. And, and when I was on, on, on their starship, the large starship, and I was being with the kids and we started to play some of the music, um, that was really a lot of fun. Yeah, That was a yeah. lot of fun. And uh, you know, I'm not a very good dancer. I haven't had a lot of practice. And, you know, I would just <laughs> do this and, and bop to the music. And then they would start to do that, you know. Oh, so they're cute. terrible dancers, but that's on me. That's not on them. <laughs> so if, if just Denise <laughs> dance badly, it's your fault then. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. I have to, well, I'm already in the hall of shame, so it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> it couldn't get any worse than that. <laughs> oh my God. What do you oh say? Oh gosh. What do you say about music? Uh, I can absolutely share it. So that's, that's when you, um, you, you, you can see differences between the, the, the culture of the, the, the people Zene, you are in contact with and uh, the Ahil Pleiadians, the, the race of, of uh, Thorhan. Thorhan loves music and he communicates with me a lot through music. And, uh, when I wasn't yet ready to have uh, really to be activated and communicate telepathically daily because that would have freaked me out, he was sending me tunes, music that were carrying messages with lyrics and the lyrics would be a message, but he would send me just few words in the song that would carry a message. And it was easier for him because I don't know why he was rebroadcasting the song he was um, receiving or just picking from everything that we broadcast into space well <laughs> we are already on the whole hall of shame of the galaxy with all the, the crap we broadcast yeah. into space oh my gosh <laughs> that's absolutely well, just, you know I, I mean the, the jerry springer show that would have done it alone you know <laughs> I know, I know. And when you, you think what we've sent on Voyager um, probe uh, all at the time, anyway, yes. let's let us forget about that. So he would he would send me these messages, and sometimes he would wake me up in the morning with this little little excerpt of a song, and I was, what's that? And I I was trying to find the rest of the song then, and that would give me a message, and but when the connection really was reactivated fully with the, the implant really reactivated fully then it was another type of music and sometimes it would be music without lyrics a lot of harp music and classical music but um very smooth very like etheric eth ethereal etherical music yeah, yeah. and this would carry emotions one day i was on the the mothership where he is and um, he was playing his harp he has a harp in his quarters and when i i came in the whole place was filled with a hologram the music the sound was creating holographic light color shapes that were moving and that was going with the music and he could even um, 
modify it, drive it, drive it with emotions. And that was absolutely beautiful. I just broke down in tears. It was my soul was res responding with it to it. Yeah, that's that's this other level of music, it's sound, frequency, it's really the key yeah. for everything, isn't it? You know, they're, they're, uh, the A's music is, what they'll do is that they will, as they, as they explore and they catalog solar systems and stars and quasars, uh, comets, asteroids, things of that nature, everything has a resonance. Yeah. And what they do is they catalog it, they, they catalog the sounds along with it. And what they do is they will overlay the different sounds of the universe or fifth density, maybe fourth, maybe third now, they overlay it. And then what they do is they create music using the sounds of the universe. And uh, I have not had the experience of seeing them create the holographs. Uh, I've seen his, historical events with the holographic technology, but I haven't had that particular experience that you've had. And it is, uh, as you would say, etheric, ethereal. Yeah. Um, but I had a difficult time attaching to it. Some of it I did. Um, some of it I, I, at part, there were parts of some music they played that was theirs that I could attach to, but I, I couldn't resonate to it. And I, I don't exactly know why, but I was always polite about it. And, but I knew they knew because they're telepathic, you know, you know, you, you can't get yeah. away with anything. Yeah. So, um, you know, but they appreciated that. However, they really were able to respond to our music, certain types of our music here. And I think of it, I think because it had so much emotion. And, you know, I had those 91 days with them on board their ship. And they had guests, and I'll never forget this. They had guests. Uh, they had rescued this, this group of people. And they were taking them somewhere, but they were stopped just outside our solar system uh, for whatever else was going on, which I don't know. Anyway, M took the opportunity to come and see me. So uh, I'm with them and I had a, uh, a very old iPod that had music on it. And so I gave it to them, you know, thinking it's not going to work because it's got a battery. I don't know how you're going to get the music off of it. <laughs> you know, I, it, they already had it before I even gave it to them, but they appreciated the gesture. And I guess it went into some kind of a museum that they have, you know, uh, earthling museum. <laughs> anyway, there was some music on it and, um, And this group that they had, had never been exposed to uh, anything Earth before. And there were uh, a couple of songs on there from Foreplay, who was a jazz group, okay? And um, Highway, I think it's Highway 101. And they were like, apparently they were mesmerized. And there was, they, they really enjoyed it. In other words, it, it created a, an emotional reaction inside of them. Wow. And what's interesting is that with telepathic races, everyone kind of gets it at the same time. So when there's an explosion or a, uh, an explosion of, of emotion, it's, it's, it vibrates throughout the, um, the soul group. And that's what happened. There was another instance 
that I wasn't there, but he told me about it, where I had been give, I, I had given them music over and over and over again. And there was one particular song called The Journey by uh, Brian Culperson. And at three minutes and 11 seconds into the song, there is this huge crescendo that he does with the piano and the music and everything builds and he does this crescendo. Well, this created an emotional response with a, a, with a group that was on board and the entire starship felt the explosion of positive, of, of joy, because they had never heard a resonance build like that and then crescendo. And they just exploded with, with emotion and, and awe. And apparently, even the Andromedans on the ship felt this, this explosion of energy. And Morinay said, after that, a lot of the youth, now I don't exactly know what that means because, you know, they have their children, you know, their children could be three, four, 500 years old. They look like they're 15, you know, so I don't know exactly what that meant to you, but they were, they were very interested in listening to the archives of music that they had been collecting from Earth, uh, which would go from contemporary jazz, smooth jazz, uh, classical music, and, and other types of indigenous music, where there's a lot of drumming and the such. Um, they're also they're fascinated with the Aborigines type of music as well. Mm. Uh, they think that that's really, really interesting. And they say it's very, very ancient. It reminds them of, of other cultures that are very, very ancient uh, in our galaxy that no longer exist, but the music is very, very similar to those old, um, to those old indigenous tribes of, of our early galaxy. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to me that you know, music is, is a bridge, sound, tone, harmonics is a bridge that we, we can communicate with. Um, and, and, it's always, and it's always been a good place where, you know, sometimes I would be having a really hard time in my life. Sometimes they would be dealing with stuff. Um, you know, sometimes uh, Phaseus was just really grumpy because he was just like, you know, I want to be doing something else. And, it, and, and I'm not slamming him. He, he just, you know, he was 4,300 years old and he was, he was tired, you know, he was tired and he, he didn't, he was mentoring Morinet. This is not a job he volunteered for. I found that after he had passed away, you know, that he hadn't, volunteered for this but uh this group had said you're you're going to mentor Morinet so um and that's that's what happened so he had his moments but sound music was always a way for us to to engage and to begin some type of conversation or dialogue you know because then I would look at him and say it sounds good doesn't it and he'd have to say yes, you know, um, especially since I learned telepathy when I was up there. It's not that I could hear all their thoughts, but I could feel that I could feel them really well because we spent so much time together. Yes. yes. 56 years. So, yes. yeah, it's, it's been quite the experience. And, you know, the kids kids, you know, I say kids, they're 150 years old, some of them, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they look like they're 12. It's, just, it's difficult to tell. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, they're, they were, they were wonderful. They were, 
you know, outside of the fact that they're already brilliant and geniuses, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, they still have that innocence of children wanting to, that having that curiosity, uh, wanting to engage, wanting to know for themselves. Um, I can remember a couple times where they would come and they would, uh, they would slowly put their hand inside the field and they would touch my clothing for them because they wanted to know what the material felt like. Uh, a, a jacket, I had a, a, a sheepskin coat I wore up there once. And they were absolutely enthralled with that, <laughs> you know, because they don't have sheep. <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty fun. That was really interesting. I garnered a lot of attention on that trip. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah, I remember, so, yeah. Well, I, I remember one, one day, uh, because the emotion is, the outburst of emotion is the way often my, commun my communication with Thorhan is activated, switch on. Either myself or him have a strong emotion and it activates the bridge. And one day he was crying with emotion, but he was extremely intense. And I connect to him and I heard echoes of music and in his head and he was in tears and he says, I picked up this piece of music from broadcast from your planet. And he said, to me, it represents humanity of earth, the heart and the emotion of humanity. And I went, what is this music then? So. He said, I don't know the name. So he made me hear it in his head. And I was mesmerized by it. And I, after our communication stopped, because we were sharing emotion, I was crying with him. And I could feel through this music all the hopes of humanity, millenniums of ancestral love and family love and people caring for their children and people looking at the sky with hope and fear and all the emotions of human emotions, the beauty of them. And once our communication uh, was finished, I straightly went on internet and this music in my head and trying to find it. And I finally found it. It was the barber's adagio for strings. Oh, interesting. The adagio for strings from Barber. And this tune to him, but that's him, um, five density Pleiadian Ahel, to him it represents the soul of humanity. And there is a crescendo in it. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Esaias, who was always a, who was always a tough nut. The, the piece of music that moved him, and this is him telling me, is a, is a, a piano piece. And uh, I don't recall giving it to them, but nonetheless, you know, they, they hear what's going on here, the media, everything. And the piece of music of ours that he enjoyed, he said, was, and they played it for me, and I knew the piece right away. It was George Winston's Thanksgiving. And that piece of music really moved the Sayas on a level. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because every once in a while you hear a, a songwriter say, you know what, um, God, what's her name? Sarah, she wrote that song, Angel. Hmm. Um, oh my God, as her last name's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, she talks about how she sat down at the piano and in like 30 minutes, the song was done. It just came down and all she had to do was play it. That's what she said. All I did was play it, and then I wrote it down because it was just right there. And I think it's it's fascinating 
that because you know the whole the entire universe and all of existence is is a holograph of color light and sound yes and i think we as as humans here because of our our whip of emotions we have this ability to tap in regardless of the level or dimension we have this ability to tap in to is it emotion is it memory um is it an actual physical experience that's been transcribed to sound i, I don't know what it is but we have this gift of being able to just pull this stuff down and there it is and you know there's they're in awe they're in awe of our ability to do this kind of stuff so you know on the one hand we have the dark side wanting to beat the crap out of us and and disempower us and and say you know you're nothing you're losers you're da, 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 da. you're not worth anything you're a pain in the ass whatever 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 and yet we are capable of this profound talent and ability that's what they want to to understand that they want to crack the code of that of the, the the power of the human soul and especially these humans of earth who are a special mixed breed of so much um they did that's why they abduct us that's why that's why they do soul scraping they they try to crack up the code and the secrets of the the power of the, the abilities of these souls the interdimensional of this so they, they can't they still haven't figured out and they won't because they are they're they getting kicked out soon so, so, so they, yeah. they, 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 they won't get to know but they, that, that drives them mad they, they would like this power they would do so much evil with this power but they still haven't figured it out it's You're impossible right. and, and they don't want to do the work what they want to do is just steal it you yeah. know want to just steal it And then so they don't have to actually do the work, go through all the lifetimes, go through the trials and tribulations, um, all the lessons. But, you know, we came in with knowledge. You know, before this universe was created, God had to have been, okay? He, he had to have existed outside the space, which we call our universe. Yeah. And so did we. We had to have existed. So we have a lot of experiences beyond this universe. Yeah. So when we came in, we came in with this knowledge already, yes. which they will never get and they will never have. No. And I'm sure it pisses them off. Oh, big time. <laughs> big time. You know, uh-huh. And, and of course, most of us are completely oblivious to this. It, you know, what are you talking about? And they're like, come on. You don't know? You don't know what you're capable of? Yes, that, that, that's why people need to, to turn within and discover who they really are and stop giving out to, to fear and confusion. That's the, the message mm -hmm. we are telling since always and teaching is repeating, you know. <laughs> well, you know, you're, if you're in fear, you're in a self-imposed prison. Yes. It makes it easy. They don't yeah. actually have to Put handcuffs on you because you've done it yourself <laughs> you know yes, yes. you're your own jailer it's, it's i know it's I astonishing know. i know i know <laughs> so oh, yeah so what so what yeah so uh, what so your first the first time you were on board the ship you you just where you were you were beamed up what, what age were you when was it i was eight you i was eight i don't remember the actual thing because i was sleeping underneath a, a tree yeah uh we were all playing hide and go seek and i remember uh, the, the adults warning us about ticks you know be careful of the ticks in the grass because you know the grass was high it was in august and uh I didn't even think about it. And I remember just waking up on the table. But after that, um, I would be drawn to the window of the house or I would go outside the yard uh, or I would go for a walk. There was a, 
cornfield not far from our house. And we used to go over there as kids and try to catch uh, corn snakes and bullfrogs. And so I would just go in there and then I would see the light, the little beam blue light, and I would just walk into it. And like, you know, like that, you're up on board. And as, as I'm materializing, they're putting the belt on me. You know, there's like this hug. The frequency feel, belt, yeah. Yes, exactly. The, uh, the en uh, environmental um, energy yeah. suit. Yeah, that's what it is. And, yeah, they do, um, they do the same to me. Yeah. yeah, well, that's because they're 5D. Yeah, our, our little fuzzy heads would explode up there without <laughs> it. <laughs> so, um, so after that, uh, and I really liked it. You know, I, I really liked the feeling. It was kind of like um, spinning really fast on a, on a merry-go-round. It was just, you know, like almost going up a drain or coming down a drain. That's kind of what it felt like. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and my stomach would, would jump up or come down, uh, oh, yeah. depending upon which direction. And uh, so after that, that was fine. Um, the first time I, I was, it, it was basically show and tell. Um, you know, I know that there was some dialogue and I can't remember any of it because I was mesmerized by what I was seeing. And it was, it was interesting. Um, it's nothing like the ships we have in the movies. Uh, they're very, very sterile for the most part, at least the hallways. Many of the rooms are very sterile. Uh, what I realized later is that even though you walk into a room, there's nothing there that does not mean there isn't anything there. That's true. It's just that they have this these fields of, of energy, and when they need something, it materializes in the room. So, but when they're not using it, it's not just out. They conserve energy. They just put it back inside this field, this this wall of, of this field, which is like this wall of energy that's stagnant. In, in other words, and, and you already know this, that they they use a lot of holographic technology. Yeah. which is the ability to create something and make it physically manifest so that you can use it, you can touch it, it's operational. And then when you're done, they literally just unwind it, the energy of it, and it, and it, it goes back to some place. So that was always interesting. The command room uh, where the pilots were and most of his crew, that was awesome. Uh, there, there were screens that were holographic and it's really hard to describe, but it's almost as if you could jump into it and you'd be in another world. But, you know, they're used to seeing it because they're, they operate them every single day. But these holographic monitors and screens, uh, I remember the first time they, I said, well, you know, exactly where am I? And he said, well, were above what you know is Alaska. And I said, well, I'd like to see that. And he walked over and put his hand on something and did a swipe to the right. And all of a sudden, the entire front of the ship became transparent glass. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And I think I said that out loud. Oh my God. You know, <laughs> And um, they all got a kick out of it because they were talking to each other. I couldn't hear it, but I could feel the energy <laughs> because I've learned their frequencies and, and I could hear one pop and then the other pop and boom, 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 boom. So they, they, were, they, were, they had a good time watching me. <laughs> um, yes. And um, because they themselves are, are in this, this reality and I think in many respects, they themselves have taken it for granted because it's their everyday reality. And, uh, you know, they don't step out of it for any period of a time to come back and say, wow, you know, this is really special. I'm so grateful for this. I'm not sure that they have those moments. Mm, yeah, yeah. Just like we don't, you know, we have, we have forgotten to have gratitude about so many things, even yes. the real simple stuff every day. Oh, yes. Um, so 
that was that was awesome. Uh, another time I was up and, and, and Mornay met me uh, at the portal and I'm like, where are we going? He was walking really fast. He goes, come. So I'm following him, almost running because, you know, he's seven and a half feet and I'm this little <laughs> work. So he's taking one stride. I'm taking five or six, you know, to try to keep up. <laughs> I remember walking in and there's, and, and there's Viseas watching this hologram and it was Earth television from Chicago. And I'm, I, 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 I said to Morning, I said, this is not a good idea. <laughs> he shouldn't watch television. <laughs> you know, and they were, they were so desperately trying to figure out our contradictions and how it is that we live with all these contradictions in our lives. And yet we somehow have learned to balance those contradictions to a point where we just, we just know that this is how life is here. It seemed, our reality seems incredibly complicated to them mm. because of all the contradictions. They don't understand how we live with all these contradictions every single day and yet continue to want more, uh, seek our answers, do internal work, pray, You know, uh, yeah. yeah, it's so different to them. Oh, yeah, it is. And it, it is. Mm -hmm. And yet, and yet we, we're capable of such depth of love yes. and compassion. Yes. And yet we live with all these other contradictions every single day. That's our power. Whatever the contradictions, whatever the, the ordeals, we still go on with the human species has is still alive and has been striving surviving for such a long time we are so powerful and um we are we are and, and especially once we learn our true history yes you now of, of being slaves to many of the other different et races and having been almost annihilated once or twice before and having to deal with dinosaurs and deal with earth changes and pole shifts and just a solar um, solar eruptions, uh, EMPs, all of these things that we've had, uh, asteroid strikes, all of these things. And yet, you know, we, we still continue to want to have families and bear children and uh, provide a great life for them, protect them. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've had everything thrown at us. Yes, yes. Everything. And, you know, we're still standing. Yes. Confused, but we're still standing. Yes, yes. And uh, <clears throat> that's where lies our, our power. It's, it's interesting that you were describing um, an, uh, uh, A's, A's, A's um, Zene uh, ship. Because um, I've never been in a Zene ship, but I've been in a Pleiadian ship uh, from the, the Galactic Federation Scout ship. Um, and many times, that's the ship that rescued me. Uh, Thoran was ship captain at the time. And uh, I've been in this scout ship so many times. And uh, he even taught me how to drive it. That was quite epic. We nearly crashed on Mars and uh, he has very good reflex. That's, that's a, a funny story, but, uh, but uh, it's, it's similar. It's not the same ship, but it's similar. And it was the fact that what is not needed is not in the room. It's, it, I experienced the same when you come in this ship, this scout ship, it's the elegant saucer, flying saucer shape, these ones uh, metallic and very elegant elegant is the word that you say when you see them it's like um, a, you know the a tor toroid, toroid toroid shape inside, you have yeah. this big central um the, what the power drive is 
with the the big um there's a cylinder with a substance it's like a plasma in it and this powers the whole ship that's to make everything work they say they harvested from the the energy from the void that they call themselves they call it thrill but in this ship it's all like um clean and clear there's nothing no furniture but when they want something you just turn back and oh this couch wasn't there wasn't it or you know and right. and when you come in the ship and the the ship is not flying it's just docked at the the, the station the mothership there's no screen it's all in the control room and there's nothing it's just when you take off uh suddenly in front of you the whole front of the the room is transparent and you can see through and explain to me it's not a glass it's actually a holographic screen that transcripts what's outside but it's, it's like a, a cinema screen it's not a glass so that's very interesting and um the controls when you sit uh, on in the armchair uh it's like there, there's nothing in front of you a few lights that can, that can light through the, the kind of the, ma the white material but when he, he he presses his hands on this material and you have holographic screens that pops pop out from everywhere plum, 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 plum. and that that's amazing and that's the same same as you described and he showed me how to even drive the ship because there are different ways of driving it with this holographic screen. So I was sat in the, the armchair and this appeared in front of me, just above my knees. Oh, wow, like a, a, a rectangle, a hologram with lots of, it was only lines and, and circles, and it was 3D at the same time. It was like in the screen, in the, the whole, this holographic screen, which was totally super flat. But if you were in front of it, it was like, uh, infinite inside you could really fly in if you had the impression that you could fly in but if you were looking on the other side it was like like a micron uh, like so thin and putting your finger in it with your own energy field and you manifest an intention and you put your finger in it and you move stuff and it moves the ship that was absolutely amazing that's an um, incredible experience. Well, I have the experience of, of flying. And I remember uh, standing there and I had to put my hand on this, this, this round knob of some sort. And I don't recall what was going on with the monitors because of, they had the transparency open. So I'm looking outside and I remember thinking to myself, I hope we don't fall. And immediately the ship went, started to go like this and drop. So he put his hand on me, on my shoulder, and it, and it stopped. And I remember <laughs> saying, you know, and he just smiled. He goes, it's okay. It happens. <laughs> oh, my God. That absolutely <laughs> reminds me when we nearly crashed on Mars. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, he's, I, you know, I was sat in the armchair, and he said, now I'm going to teach you how to drive it by thought. And I say, well, I'm not quite uh, psychic enough or strong enough to do that. He said, don't worry, you have an implant and we'll do it with that. So he tuned in my implant um, to the, the frequency of the navigation mother oh. or central of the ship. So I was in, in resonance with it. And I had to put my two hands at the end of the armrest on two, um, it was um, octagonal, patches like felt like glass and that was connecting my consciousness also to the navigation i'm not able to explain in more details <laughs> oh god no <laughs> that's i can just describe what happened and he said now he said think where you want to go and the ship will follow your thought i like, no way so he said for the moment we are going to set it on planet mercury and you got just, you look and you go ahead and you see this little uh, white dot there, that's Mercury. And we're going to go there. You just have to focus and go to it. And we, we will get there. 
and he had set the, the navigation on super slow <laughs> because they can move, you know. <laughs> so and nothing was moving because you know it's not like in the sci-fi movie you have the stars shooting. You know, it's I mean yes. it's, it's like you don't even know you're moving. It's really weird. Well, it's because they fold space. That's I know. Why. Yeah. <laughs> and suddenly, but when some when you pass by something very, uh, very close, you see the thing moving, passing. So I don't remember where we were. We were out after Jupiter orbit. I don't know where we were at that time. We saw Mars. We passed Mars. <laughs> and I was like this. And I went, oh my gosh, is that, is that Mars? <laughs> we just... <laughs> And I, I swear, I saw Mars from very close. And <laughs> Thorhan has such good reflex. He just switched me off and took back the controls. You went like, right. yeah. and he said, okay, yeah. I think you're going you're gonna to stop trying to drive this thing for a while. And I was like, mm. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Yeah, you <laughs> so didn't want to have to explain that to the Pleiadian Council. You <laughs> did what? <laughs> You gave her the keys? Are you crazy? <laughs> no, oh, he's done things he wasn't allowed many times. <laughs> yeah, well, my experience uh, was after M had put his hand on my shoulder, I was flying. I was flying the ship. Uh -huh. And at, um, I don't know how long it was because time is not relevant when you're in that space. So I, I remember when we were done, and he took his hand off me. I said, well, you know, where did we go? He goes, we really didn't go anywhere. You were just going in a circle in a loop. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. okay. I couldn't get in any trouble. But they don't you know. trust, they don't trust us. And <laughs> well, whatever lifetime I had flying Starship, that was a long time ago. And you know, it's a perishable skill. <laughs> It really is. <laughs> if you don't do it a lot, you're going to lose it. <laughs> so, yeah. Talking, yeah, talking about this. Um, before we came, we were already with them, and we decided to come. I remember, I was in the in the Pleiades on the same planet as Thorhan, and uh, I decided to come and respond to the call of duty for what was needed to be done. Have you, what do you remember before coming? Do you remember um, being one of the A's or? Yes, I, I was shown the lifetime that brought me here. Well, parts of it. And it was roughly between probably closer to 63,000 years now in our, in Earth's rotational uh, yeah. time system. Uh, I was, I was, I was very tall, approximately 10 feet. Um, I was here with seven others and we were here on not only a, an expedition to chart and map different uh, biological and DNA species on the planet. Because in the outskirts of our galaxy, there's a lot of, there's a lot of life and it's all experimental life. Uh, in other words, they're, they're mixing and merging different types of DNA and creating biologicals to see what type of environments they can withstand. And then what they do is once they pass those tests, they begin to seed them in different other places, but there are specific systems where they do this. And I was on one of those missions and we got caught in the middle of, uh, of a battle between two, two other groups that were hostile to each other. And um, I was told that we made an effort to mediate this hostility because we were stuck in the middle of it anyway. And uh, so, you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time 
to begin the mediation process to see if we could get ourselves out of the way. Well, no one was going for that. And they basically blew us away. So, and our ship was taken and, and I've been here ever since trying to get home, taken the long way home actually. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's. That, that I remember, I remember it now because they showed it to me. And that was one of the images that was on the wall uh, that came out when I was eight. And they had this little cap that they put on my head. And what I was seeing were memories, cellular memories that are already contained, not only in my DNA, but my auric field. Mm. So what I was seeing was actually my own memories, which I thought was fascinating. Oh, yeah. Which is why I had this emotional response because I, it, the technology triggered my own memory. And now I'm in this human body. So I have this wide range of emotions. Uh, so whatever emotions I had then doesn't compare to how I would feel now because of, of being in this particular body, this, this physicality and having this huge range of emotion. So it, it, it kind of magnifies everything by 10 or maybe higher, maybe in some cases by a hundred. Uh, you know, the idea though, is if you can control the emotion and, and focus it, the emotion with intent, um, that's really what they're afraid of, is us getting our, the ability to control our emotions and marry it with intent, focused intent. Oh my God. Um, there is nothing we would not be capable of. Yes, we can modify. Which is why our... they constantly have us in fear, because you know we're not empowered. We're we're just reacting to the stimuli of the outside world, which is where they manipulate us. Yep. 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 So it's it's really extraordinary to be. Um, it's extraordinary to be in this position, and then have mentors who totally get that and they're like, Hey, it's going to be okay. You just don't understand what's going on. You don't understand the situation you're in, which is why you're acting this way and you're reacting to all this nonsense. Yes. 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 So I, for one, am, am very, very grateful that we have these type of mentors. Um, you know, they're, it's just, it's, it's not you know, always easy. Energy flows where focus goes. And if, if you're going to focus on something really negative, that's where the energy is going to take you. But if you understand that that's all a sham, that that's all a game of manipulation, once you understand that, and you're able to, to withdraw your energy from that and put it into something positive. And, and when you want to take that energy and that intention and rise to something higher, to take yourself to something higher, even though you may not know what it is, just the intent of wanting something better, uh, a higher frequency, the universe will react to that desire. And it will begin to pull you up. It'll start to put the stones in front of you. And then what we have to do is just take one step in front of the next until we get to this place. And then we look back and we're like, whoa, you know, I've made all this progress. And you don't realize it because you're in the middle of it until you stop at some point at a plateau and you look back. And the old life that you had that you didn't want is so far in the distance, you can't even see it. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly how you, driving a ship is like driving your life. And um, I'd say focusing on something and you enter in quantum resonance with it in the future, wherever it is in the universe, in the time, any, anywhere, you suddenly make contact with this and you are going to be 
magnet, like, like a magnet, attract to this thing. You just have to manifest it and you make contact with it and you just have to walk to let yourself go there. You yeah. have to walk to it. Walk to it. Yeah. And yeah. work towards it. And then one day it's there and the sun is still shining and you're like, whoa. And then and then everything falls into place. All the perspectives fall into place and you realize when you look back all the things that you had to go through, all the people that you met, all, all of the relationships that were good or bad, they all then suddenly make sense. Yes. And, and then you, you're at this place of like gratitude. Yes. You know, and, it, and it's at that point you let go of all the hurt and the pain and the frustration because you now realize these were the things, these events, these people, help get me to this place they drove me towards what it was i really wanted yes yes it's yes. um it's an extraordinary journey yes and we are very grateful to be able to not only to live this but to be able to share it and uh there yeah. Are, yeah 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 well it's going to be interesting now that they're doing disclosure um, you know, I keep telling people, what about first contact? We've already had first contact. Our ancestors had this long ago. We didn't build the pyramids. Sorry. You know, we didn't build the pyramids on Mars. You know, what do you think? The Egyptians flew them there on, on ships uh, to Mars to practice building pyramids and then come back. It's just, you know, nonsense. So what it is, is that we're remembering. Um, we're being we're being shown uh, parts of our past, of humanity's past, to give us perspective so that when we're confronted with the future, we have a way to engage with it. Yes. Uh, and, and that's important because if you have absolutely no clue what that is in front of you, you know, are you going to move towards it? No, yes. you need perspective. Yes. yes. And so they have to tell us about our past now. It's been hidden all these years. And, you know, and the future is literally right in front of us. Yes. The whole change of everything, the, uh, the awakening, the conscious jumps, and the changes in physical DNA, it's all literally right in front of us. And you know, they're hundreds of years behind in letting us know what's been going on. So we're going to get the crash course big time. Yes. So that yes. we have perspective, you know, so we have some kind of perspective. We don't lose our minds trying to figure out what, you know, how can this be? Um, you know, and that's going to involve civilization, uh, our physicality, religions, philosophical teachings, science, all of it, you know, yes. you know, they're going to have to explain how the Egyptians had spark plugs and light bulbs. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes, yes, yes. No. We've been, yeah. yeah. We've been maintained in this matrix of ignorance since a long time and now it's just falling apart and the pieces of the history of earth is being given back to the real history but it's been giving given back to the 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 people of earth and uh, that that is going to be i know we are there and we are there for some people but that's how it is and um i be, i believe well what of what i have um i've been told that we've jumped on the good timeline the timeline where we are going to get out of this this illusion and this this mess and um things are the war is not over oh my gosh we we still need we still need to fight and keep our vibration high as much as i can every you know every everybody who says oh light has won and stuff okay we are on the good way in the good way we, we're fine we'll be fine but it's we must not stop that is if we don't stop fighting 
that's going to be okay. That's going to be great at the only condition. Yeah. We keep on going as we do. Keep on fighting, resisting to any kind of control, mind control, and discovering who we are and rising our vibration. We need to keep on fighting, telling the truth, disclosing. Um, and uh, do you have the same feeling? I do. I do. Um, we're, we're clearly walking towards, towards our future. But like you said, the jackals are literally right behind us. Yes. Waiting for us to fall off so that, that they can, you know, consume another soul or consume another culture, destroy another cult country. You know, they're literally on our heels because their entire existence had to do with controlling and manipulating us. And now that we're no longer in that position or they're in that position, they are now chasing after us as we are moving towards, towards our future. And, and most people aren't even aware of what that exactly is. They know on a spiritual level, on a intuitive level that everything is changing. They, they know this, even though they may not say it out loud, they are aware that everything's changing and it's happening very, very quickly. And they also realize that a lot of darkness is suddenly being revealed that has been hidden for hundreds and thousands of years. Yeah. And you know, most people have some common sense. They understand that when suddenly all this darkness shows up, that there's something going on. And the process of how this is all going to unfold or is in fact unfolding, I think are lessons learned from the first time this didn't work. I also think this is lessons learned with the time traveling, both of, uh, of our, our benevolent white hats on this planet using looking glass and other technology and also uh, benevolent extraterrestrials or star families coming in and saying, look, you're, you're about to make these moves. How about looking at this perspective? What about if you were to change this, this, and this, you would have maybe a different outcome and you could cut 15 years off your struggle. Yes. So there's a lot of that going on. They can't say you have to do this. All they can do is come back and say, look, we can suggest this. And then of course our white hats will process that information and then they will try to figure out if it's valid or not. And at the same time, what this is doing is it's building trust because you know, in, in order to, to get to the next level where we, we move into fourth and to fifth, there's a lot of things we have to do and change. And the first is how we treat each other, how we treat ourselves. And we have to dismantle our nuclear weapons. Yes. We have got to do something with all of that technology that is not only crumbling, but is in fact poisoning the planet. So, and you know, they have this ability, uh, the star, star families, they have this ability already to do it. But you know, back in the 50s, the Pleiadians warned, they warned Eisenhower about, you know, dealing with the Orion group. Yeah. And he says, you know, look, we will help you, but you've got to uh, disable your nukes because they're a real problem for you. And of course, we didn't have the foresight then. And the Orion group, they were like, hey, you can keep those. We don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, and they didn't because they, what they were doing is farming us. Yeah. You know, of, but course. of course, we didn't know that either. So, you know, the men that made that, the men and women that made those decisions in the 50s were literally between Orion. And their thinking only compounded the problem. Yes. Uh, yes. Because at that time, their thinking was that, you know, there's enemies everywhere. Yes. And yes. It wasn't true, uh, but that was their mindset. Um, yes. It's It's been fascinating. And, you know, we're living in a movie. And it's a movie that we're all starring in and writing at the same time. 
we're all writing our story as we're evolving into the future. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know, I love a happy ending. <laughs> I sure do. That's why I watch Hallmark movies. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. As that is, there's always a happy ending, you know. We are heading uh, towards a happy ending because we're making it. And we, we've jumped on the a timeline that leads to this um, happy ending, but we must keep on fighting for it. It's not because we're on the path that we must stop running. <laughs> As you just say very rightfully, you have the, 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 the wolves at your back, the hyenas at your back, and uh, shackles, yeah. shackles at, your, at yeah. our back, and uh, keep on running. <laughs> don't stop <laughs> you know it's not because exactly. you see the, the end of the the, the the road or tunnel as we say that you go oh great i'm gonna stop running <laughs> no run for it run until you've passed the door keep on running and that every there's so many manipulation in in the now all the, the spiritual movements and stuff like light as one great just sit back no 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 keep on running and nearly there but don't stop and uh, our um, yeah our families are there and um, I think the trick now is to help people imagine a different future um, you know we, we hear a lot about uh, med beds mm -hmm. and we hear about we have now flying cars coming into reality uh, we hear about the Mars bases, the uh, the moon bases, about um, our secret space program and the fact that, you know, they've been able to travel outside of our solar system and they themselves are exploring. And, and now they're all having to come back and they're going to have to reintegrate with Earth. So what's happening here is that the, the attempt of breakaway civilizations is, is they're now having to come back and rebuild our civilization. Because you can't just ditch your race or have any respect for groups that did that. Um, and and I, I know for a fact that they that the secret space program has had conversations in regards to that fact, which is why they've been forced back into our solar system. And that's because they have to take responsibility. You are not going to do what you did here anywhere else. You are going to solve the problems and you're going to move together because you are a race. You are in fact a family, whether you care to admit it or acknowledge it or not, that's what it is. And we are not going to allow you to just run them up and be idiots out here in some other place. Because that's why we're here is to take care of a, another group that is tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years old that has been doing this throughout the galaxy and other galaxies. So we're not going to shut them down only to let you go run around and do the same thing. Yeah. So they're being the big brothers now and they're coming back and saying, yo guys, it's time to grow up. And these are the steps you have to take. And this is how you have to start looking at things if you choose to want to do this. And, and you know, there's a learning curve for all of us. Um, yeah. You know, many of the people in these space programs, they, uh, they have no past here. Some of them have been born off world. So they've never actually had any real integration with the earth herself. Not all, but some. So, you know, this is going to be a, an extraordinary experience for all of us. And, and there's not one of us that isn't going to be touched by this. Yes. By this process. And, yes. uh, you know, but now we have to begin visualizing a, a better future, a different future. And you know that's 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 kind of the trick here. I think in some ways the Star Trek movies and things of, of like that have 
have tried to, to bring that premise to people's consciousness, yep. but they don't go far enough. Now that the reality of all of it is confronting us, um, now we have to literally physically manifest, begin to manifest it for ourselves and for each other. Because as I've said, and I, I, I believe you have said as well, we are now forefathers and foremothers of our yes. race. Yes. So what we do now with our time and our focus and our energy sets a precedent for future generations. So we are, we are responsible for that. We have to own that. Every and one of us present now are responsible. Every single one of us. You know, from the sanitation engineer to the cook, to the car salesman, to the doctor, to the lawyer. It doesn't yes. matter. All of us have to start thinking about this now. Yes. And uh, we all have wow. a role to play in it. We all have a role yeah. to play in this. We all do. That's why we're all here now. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And once we know it, we start to get back to our own power and think, hey, wait a minute, so what could I do? What am I good at? What are my tools? What are my, yeah. my gifts, my qualities? Yeah, what, yeah, what did I incarnate with? What are my tools? Okay, so I'm gonna use them. And who I am? And this starts like this. And once you discover who you are and why you are here, there's nothing the dark ones can do to hold you back. It's game, it's game over. Game over. Game over. Yeah. Game over. Yeah. You're, you're out of the lobster pot, the crab pot. Yes. You are free to move about the cabin. And no one can tell you any different. Yes. Just do no harm to others. Just do no harm to others. Yes. That is, that is why our families... Mm -hmm. Galactic families, I mean, Galactic Federation, the Andromedan Council, the Council of Five and all the others, they, they are here, they always say they are not here to save us, they are here to assist us saving ourselves. Because oh. if they do the job for us, we will never grow and that will all be for nothing. They show us the way they do their best to that that we wake up to who we truly are what is the great awakening it's not especially being aware that what's going on the 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 the, the great awakening it's inside awakening to who you truly are and once you've done that oh my gosh you that's game over for them we're so powerful we're so powerful yeah um. Well, there's doing and then there's teaching. And when you do it, you not only learn it, but then you can teach it because you've actually done the experience. Yes. And having the experience alters your DNA. It changes who you are because you now have the knowledge and the wisdom and insight that goes with going through that experience. And you can't learn that in books. You know, yes. you just cannot learn that in books. You can only learn it by living yes. and experiencing, experiencing it. And I, I want to... And then you're empowered. And then you're empowered because now you know. Now you know. It's like, you know, reading a book on on how to, how to swim, as opposed to actually taking swimming lessons. If you've read two books on how to swim and you jump in the lake, you're gonna drown. You're gonna drown, because you don't know. But if you've learned to be in the water and you've learned to use your body in the water to buoy yourselves, to use your, your limbs to move you across the water, through the water, then you're gonna survive. And there is a huge difference. There's living reality, and then there's playing a game of virtual reality. Yeah. They're not the same. Yes, yes. They're just not the same. 
you know, so, and I brought that up because a lot of kids are into the virtual reality thing. They're like, oh, in 10 years, all, all video games are going to be virtual reality. Well, what about the reality you're living here without, without the helmet on? What's yeah. wrong with this? You know? <laughs> I know. I know yeah. that our children are the ones who are targeted now because our generation we've awakened it's fine we 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 the fighters we're the openers of the ways but the, the kids they are the ones they are the the humans of this new world this yeah. new future and they try to just lock them down and they do whatever they can to lock them into a virtual matrix so Okay, we have to focus on our awakening, but more important is focusing on the kids. Just watch them. What are they up to? What are they watching? What are they doing? That That's super important. I, I believe that that's happening now. I oh, think yeah. once the all of the information regarding uh, child trafficking, human trafficking, and everything else that goes with it that's so dark, that's going to cause a massive switch in everyone's consciousness, including the young people. And uh, that that literally is is in front of us. Yes, yes. I yes. think that is uh, absolutely true. But you know, if you're going to tell someone to clean their house, you better make sure your house is clean first. If you're going to tell somebody how to act, and, you know, what is appropriate and what is not the new then we ourselves have to know that first we have to be coming from a place of of knowing or it's just not going to be believable yes yes uh and you know kids whatever it can be said about them you know they can smell bullshit a mile away hmm. they really can for the most part because hmm. they call each other on it all the time yes but we have to be coming from a place of, okay, we've done this work. We know it's real. We know it works. And we know how to apply it. Are you interested in learning? Yes. And there will be a majority of younger people that will say yes. They will want to know. It may start out just as a curiosity. But once they begin the process and it begins to empower them, and it begins to free them on levels they can't even imagine now, then that's it. It's it's over because you'd rather have, you know, children you have to hold back than children you have to push. Yes. So the messaging here has to be one that engages their imagination so that they are drawn to the process and to the future and begin to create it with us because after all they're going to inherit it so they have to be fully engaged so uh i'm not exactly sure what that looks like just yet but i know that there's a lot of conversations both on earth and off earth about how to engage the young the younger generations on this planet uh, with exactly that messaging so that they, they can engage voluntarily and the initial reason doesn't matter. But once they're engaged, the process will begin to empower them and then it's off to the races. Yes. Because you know, Elena, once their head's out of the sand, they can't put it back. They can't that's put it back. Said. That's what it said. So, um, what said. And then that's all we got to do is get their heads out of the sand. Yes, yes. What Thoron told me is that the kids now, they, the new generation, they way more um, higher up in frequencies than, than, than us, yeah. more and more and more. And they are looking, they're craving for this connection faster and earlier. And they, if we don't catch that at the start, and we, if we are not vigilant, they are going to look for that online on YouTube, TikTok, whatever thing to try to find spiritual guidance. And they, that's where the predators, the dark ones are 
looking for these kids to drag them into another matrix and lock them their, their psyche and make of make of them passive little zombies we need to really be vigilant and go go forward go forward not wait start to talk about our kids about all these things remember when we were kids we were open to listen to these these stories but the kids are so let us tell them what is really going on and they'll understand and let them offer to be their guides guide them yeah. you want to know about crystals you want to know about astral travel i'll teach you i'll show you i know i'm doing it oh really and we we, we exactly. need to yeah yes 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 there are a lot of young people who think old people are idiots and, and i keep reminding them you don't get Get old on this planet being an idiot <laughs> you know you don't yes yes you have to learn to navigate this planet and everything that's on it <laughs> in order to live a full life yeah and if you don't then your journey could be short yeah are you um yeah are you visiting Morinian Vices? Um, it's almost six months since I've heard from him. Okay, that must be very busy. Uh, hmm. I hope so. You know, I'd hate to think of him sitting on a beach drinking Mai Tais. <laughs> We're going through all this crap. I don't think anyone. I kid. I kid. <laughs> I don't. I, mean, I, I wouldn't mind being there myself, frankly. But. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I'm sure they are. I know there's a lot going on out there. Yeah, I don't think They're, anyone upstairs is sat on a beach. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I was just being a smart ass. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. And uh, we, they just, they surely look after you. And um, they're not never very <laughs> far, never very far. Um, no, I remember one time there was a, a a very long period of time. I was living in Malibu at the time. There was a, a long stretch of time where I didn't hear from them. And then suddenly, you know, they, they come back and, and I remember coming on board and the first thing I said to him, I said, wouldn't you stop for coffee? You know, and he's like, what? <laughs> he didn't understand the reference. So I couldn't use any earth humor with him. So, uh, oh my God, yes. You know. Earth humor, they so don't get it. <laughs> so no, funny. They, they sure don't. <laughs> what's what what's your fun, funniest moment with 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 them? The moment that made you laugh. Oh, my funniest moment. I would have to say, you know, they're all good moments. Yeah. And they're all teachable moments. But I, I think some of my fondest memories are watching the kids mm. interact with each other and then interacting with me and um, listening to, to our music. Yes. And appreciating us and our culture you know it in the very beginning it was really quite daunting uh because you can feel very very inferior yeah i know you can you can feel small compared to who they are and what they are just by their presence yes um you know that they're together. They all know who they are. Uh, they're all extremely intentional with everything they do. Every motion they make, every thought they have, every, every word that they have with you, whether it's telepathic or not, everything has been well thought out and very intentional. And you can feel very first grade.
the interesting, one of the most interesting parts of the journey for me is how they have been able to reflect back, not our weaknesses, but our strengths, what it is that we do that they really admire, such as creating music, our, our a drive to survive, uh, taking care of family, um, children, always being eager to laugh and to share, and how many people on this planet wake up every morning realizing that today is a miracle. We don't talk about it, it's not shared, but many of us have that, you know, that, you know, thank God it's another day. And those are the things that they look at and say, gosh, after everything that you're dealing with now and everything that your civilization has gone through, and you know, here you are on the precipice of not only a spiritual awakening, but the extension of your DNA strands. You did this, no one else did this. You guys did this. You're, whether you're aware of it or not, your drive, your desire called this forth. We're here just to assist in yes. that process. Yes. I hear you know, the same. I hear and, the and same. And at the same time, to remove the obstacles, which aren't your fault, and they were never supposed to be here in the first place. Yes, I hear exactly the same. Uh, the same thing that they are here to assist us, and to, 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 to take away to remove what we are not able to deal with because it comes from another world. Exactly. They empower us to take back our planet, but as as much as we can, we are able to. And anything that is extraterrestrial, invasive, regressive, they are dealing with because we don't have the weapons, we don't have the technology to to to, to fight them. So that well, that's there. We don't think holographically either. So no, we're we're constantly outmaneuvered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're taking care of that. But Thorhan always says to me, we're taking care of anything that technological and war and stuff against extraterrestrials, he says. But you need to do your part of the job, he says. Otherwise, it won't work, he says. You have, and you have one job. He uses the finger every time, he says. Tell them they have one job. Raise their frequency. And that's his finger, <laughs> it's commander, it's like, I say, oh, okay, <laughs> tell them, <laughs> yes, I, I, commander. Uh, <laughs> Roger that, sir. <laughs> and some, yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's so like, oh, they, they, yes, what, what, what is nice to, 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 to tell um, everyone is that they have emotions and feeling like us, and they sometimes they can get annoyed, you know, and um they don't understand something and they could or some some sometimes they see a group of humans on earth they, they are acting so stupidly and they are being so mind control and they really run for it and sometimes they are like oh stupid human wake up <laughs> Do you know i can feel that i can feel that they're like this sometimes well, I can only talk about the Pleiadians, um, the Ahil Pleiadians I'm in contact with, but I suppose um, it's a bit, uh, bit the same with the A's. Wouldn't it be the same? Well, they've, they've, invested, they've invested a lot of themselves here as well. Yeah. And I think they don't understand why we don't get it yet. <laughs> um, but then again, you know, I'm, you know I, I have toyed with Mornay about this. I'm like, well, let's trade places. Let's trade places. Yeah. All right. I will, I will take over your body. You come down here and take over mine. You know, and he was just like, no. Yeah. That won't happen. Yeah. And I said, why? Because you're afraid? He goes, well, it wouldn't be allowed. I said, that's probably a good thing, isn't it? He goes, yeah, it is a good thing. <laughs> you would not want to be here dealing with this. Uh, because he doesn't have any actual physical 
experience in third density. Hmm. But aside from that, they do get frustrated. I've seen it. I've, I've actually seen him shake his head at me, just like my father would, hmm. you know, just, and I'm, you know, sometimes I'm waiting to see his head roll off his shoulders because he's shaking it so much. Yeah. And, you know, and I just say, look, we're doing the very best we can. Yes. Yes. We really are. Yes. But, you know, you, they understand. They understand yeah. that of course. we have been in the dark for so long. And um, we still don't have a grasp on what reality actually is. We really don't know. They don't, we don't realize that other star systems and civilizations that are at the same level as us are living completely different lives now. Uh, they're off world, they're exploring. They, they don't live in a monetary system. They have uh, healthy bodies. Their life expectancy is, is between two to 500 years now in a single body. We don't have any knowledge of that. Yes. Because we're the last. We're the last to be freed um, yes. from this group. And uh, which is why they're fighting such tooth and nail. Oh my God. Because yes. it's, it's over for them. And, and it literally is over for them. Yes. Yes. Um, and, over. you know, some of these beings don't have soul. So when that light goes out, it's out forever. And they know it. And they're more terrified than, than anything. Yes. Th that's what I'm yeah. told as we well. Have more fear than we yeah. They're the ones yeah, who are this afraid. Yeah. Which is why they get so angry. It's because they're they have more fear than we do. The angrier you get is the more fear fear you have. Because that's how fear manifests itself as anger. Yes. So. Yes. Very and, interesting. And uh, something that's going to make you smile with a few echoes I have uh, by Thoran of what's happening on Mars. Mars, who's been uh, now uh, liberated and read and that's so much going on on Mars. Um, and um, they have they've they've done on Mars what they what the Galact Galactic Federation, I can only speak for, for, for them because that's the information I get from them. What the, the way they deal with, with Mars, with the Mars local um, beings, which are old yes. species of reptilians and insectoids, uh, they, are, they have empowered them for years, given them weapons and uh, just why, why wind them up uh, to to resist to the 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 cigars and the, well you know to, we must not name them but and um, what Thoran said to me is that the the regressive reptilians not to name them the big C they who hold the main bases on Mars. They are extremely angry. He says they are furious, furious. And he said, you know, against who they are furious? I said, well, I suppose against the Galactic Federation. He said, against the Andromeda Council. I went, no way. <laughs> he said, yes, they are angry against them because it's because of them that they are losing because the Andromeda Council has foreseen what was going to happen and traced it back on, in time backwards and asked us to help and intervene because we are military force yeah. and um and they, they put all this in motion yes yes yeah. that means they are so in fear because they know they are losing and so um I thought, lose. yeah <laughs> <They're gonna lose. laughs> so get their masses checked. that's what it means i know i, mean, I know even a spanking i mean a whooping a full-blown whooping yes you know yes. behind the shed kind of a whooping and i'm oh, so yeah, yeah. I, and i'm so glad that our information um match on this topic because i was told by thorhan oh yes we are here because so much more is at stake and he said it's the andromedan council who asked us to come and assist here 
and it, it that's what it, it told me and uh, otherwise he said we wouldn't be here if they hadn't foreseen that a seed of evil would be born in your solar system that would bother uh, in many centuries later the whole galaxy and it's exactly what Morinet told you and that's that, 30 years ago yeah 30 years ago yes Yes, and I really want, you know, to, I don't know, I feel emotion to say that, but everything you said a few decades ago, it's happening now, and everything was true, and it's, of course it's true, because, I mean, it's given by real beings, I mean, everything is real, but it is happening now, and yeah. Thorhan told me that the the timelines we change them so we change them well and they try the dark ones they try to modify them does it, the fight is on so many levels and it is also on the time level so what was foreseen maybe it was foreseen at a certain particular time but as it's as this fight there are things that are postponed a few decades later, you know, or sometimes. So everything you said, you said it in advance and it was, it's happening now. And it's, I want to say, well, thank you for having, having started to, to, to warn everyone. And many, many people have listened to you and have trusted you and still trust you. And now everyone can really see that this is really happening and there are so many more contactees now like me who are just told the same things and coming out and speaking and I would encourage anyone who knows things to just come out as well and and really you were the precursor in this disclosure movement and in in this revelation of this truth and um well in the early days, you're, in, in truth, there were a lot of other people, um, some of who have crossed over and passed mm. years back. You know, um, all of us, we, we've all done the very best we could. We've, you know, it, it's hard being a trailblazer because as you're, you don't exactly know where you're going. You don't know exactly how the message is going to be received. But what, you're, what happens is, is that you're just driven to continue to do it. Yes. yes, yes. And um, that takes its toll. But, you know, I, I'll tell you, I, it's, it's been an honor to be of service to humanity. Yes. You know, the more I meet other races, the more I realize how special we are down here. Um, we, we really are extraordinary and there's just, I don't know that there's enough people ready to even hear that message yet, but we truly are extraordinary. And, you know, you have third, third density benevolence, fourth density benevolence, fifth density benevolence, and there is mentoring from sixth density and maybe even to seventh, I don't know, but I know for sixth where the mentoring is occurring that's involved in this, in this program, this, this, this thing that's playing out here. Yes. And they're doing it because they see the value in us. The potential. And there has to be a way to get people here to see the value in themselves. <laughs> you know, that just has to happen. And I don't know how that's going to happen. I mean, yes, people are waking up. Uh, but the more voluntary that process is, the more actual leaders we're going to have. Yes, yes. And the world's going to need leadership, real good leadership. Uh, we all need to become leaders in our own way. Yes. So this never happens again, yes. anywhere, you know, yes. and I know that we will become uh, champions for the underdogs. 
I know we will once we're out there because we can totally relate being the underdog because we've been the underdog since the get-go. Yes. You know. Uh, Thorhan said to me once that one day we will teach them. Yeah. Yeah. Em and Fisaya said the same thing to me. That there would come a time where we would actually be their teachers. Oh, really? Yeah. That's in the early notes. Wow. <laughs> the very early notes. Wow. wow. It's nice to hear that again. <laughs> wow. Wow. And I'm sure we would compare our notes. We would find so many similarities. Um, yeah. I'm glad we did this this way, where yes. nobody knows. Yes. <laughs> It's just us. Yes. And um, yeah. so many things we have lived and um, so many, I, I mean, I honor your courage, your resilience. And, uh, but how you, the way you said it, we have no choice. We just keep on going and doing it because that's what we do. That's what we do. And we're here for that. When you're compelled to do something, you, you just you have to do it. Yes. And, you know whether you're a soldier, a doctor, a nurse, a, a midwife, an educator, uh, a paramedic, a first responder, a police officer. You know when you're compelled to do something, and you act on it, you are creating a frequency, a vibration. Uh, of hope for people. Yes. Hope. And and an, and an example of someone of an individual being empowered. You know, here in the United States, we have this horrible psychology about um, about law enforcement people, hmm. and. They so don't deserve this. They're solid. They are as solid as you can be. Yeah, there's a few idiots, but there's always a few idiots. That doesn't mean you throw everything away because of a few idiots. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd never have a government, right? <laughs> <laughs> and if we were to apply that, it, that, that's the place it would apply is with government, you know? Because I see nothing but idiots there. Um, but, uh, you know, you lead by example and you lead because of, of your, your convictions. And, you know, I, I, I'm blessed to be able to look at humanity in a way because I have something to compare it to. And yeah, we have issues. Yeah, we have a lot of maturing to do. But at the same time, we have extraordinary tools. We have extraordinary courage. We have an extraordinary amount of inner strength that, and that, that strength, that energy is being wasted, being angry and blaming everyone else for everything that had absolutely nothing to do with anything. It's just, you know, and, and it's all being triggered and manipulated so that another species can feed off of us. Mm. And uh, and now and you have that same experience now and, and yeah there are other contactees that I have had contact with that I'm hoping will come forward when they're ready and you know now is probably a good time yes for many of them because it's not the same environment it was back in the 90s or even earlier in the 50s when you had uh, you know people starting to talk about this and you know the government's oh it's swamp gas it's swamp gas yeah swamp gas does 90 degree turns at 10,000 miles an hour come on yes. it's it's different and um we're going to be okay we're, we're gonna definitely we're definitely going to get there yes you know it's, uh, mm. I, I just wish it was sooner than later like yesterday like yesterday. 
it it's up to us to. Because then I can go to the beach and have a my time. You know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> when when I said to to I asked to Thoran once, um, when do you see this happening that uh, we've done it and we we are there and that that's it? He said, at the rate it is going, I would the pronostics are about in a century. I went, no way, no. And he said, hey, timelines, you change and you have total power on your timeline. And you can, if you make an extra effort, you can speed it up and it, it can happen it, in just 20, 20 years if you want. You, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's up to it's you. Up to yeah, yeah, he said to me. Okay. So we we must never sit and wait all oh, that deities are going to come and it's going to be great but they are here since like no it's we need to stop sit and wait that's manipulation just raise your frequency you know thoran told me once he said a key has been given to you many keys but one has been given to you very long time ago he said to me i said what key he said the key for your liberation, the key that sorts out everything, and it's two words. Gnoti seoton. It's the ancient Greek that says, know thyself. Mm. And it's written on the frontisip of a temple in Greece in Delphi. Yes. Know thyself. That is the key to our liberation, to our victory to the, 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 the peace in the galaxy, know thyself. Once we know who we are, that's it. That's what he told me. Yeah. Hey, I wanna, I'm gonna end this with, I just wanna say that um, you did an interview with Michael Sala that um, I understand was just extraordinary. And then there's another speaker who, um, who, in my opinion, is um, very sketchy, who contradicted a lot of things that you said about Mars. And I just, I just want you to know that uh, I 100% support you and what you were told about what's going on on Mars. Um, you know, there are, there are a lot of shills. There are a lot of people who were part of the secret space program who are still on the dark side because they're being controlled, manipulated, and blackmailed. And they have no way out of their predicament. But that doesn't mean we can't call them out. <laughs> yes. So I'm not going to mention any names, but I'm, I'm sure you already know who I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, but uh, I support you 100 percent thank you okay? that, so that, that is very informative kiss our ass <laughs> well i yeah th thank you i i just wow i just appreciate and uh, oh yes I, there's a lot of you know when you start to say some truth you you start to to draw uh, the more you shine the more you draw shadows you know and uh, yeah. i receive a lot of it goes with, it goes with the territory Yes, I receive. Yeah, bad it's still messages. the wild west here. It's still the wild west here. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you get you got the same insight about about situation on Mars and and everything and and. Uh, well, it had to happen. Yes, it had to happen. You can't clean up here and let them go there. No. Yes, it's in three points. Uh, uh, we were told, you and I, the same thing. Earth, its moon, and Mars. The seed of a dark alliance that would yes. bother the rest of the galaxy. There, when Thoran says to me, there is so much more at stake than you can imagine. That was it. And the key is within us. Well, my dear, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your space with me. Thank you, Alex. And, uh, and I hope folks get something out of this. So we're walking together towards this beautiful future. We are making it. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. Welcome.
Thank you.